YouTube vloggers are absolutely insane. Um, I've literally seen them get away with murder. We're talking about David Dobrik. I was asking you guys to give me stuff to react to, and you guys were like, the worst things ever that vloggers have done. And the David Dobrik stuff is quite up there. Uh, I never made a video on it at the time because of the fact that um, I wasn't too sure whether Jeff Wittick was uh, literally um, going to have severe life-threatening injuries forever. But he's on his ninth surgery now and seems to be calling out David Dobrik. So that's how that's going. For a quick recap, there was like a holiday that all of the Vlog Squad members went on where they decided to climb onto an excavator. David Dobrik got Jeff Wittick to climb on to like a rope swing, swung him around so fast that he ended up smashing into the side of the excavator and he basically nearly died. He ended up only really having permanent vision issues and, uh, well, he, he had to have nine surgeries. Uh, but, but it's anything for the vlog. Hashtag that. But apparently they're not friends anymore. Uh, who'd have guessed? Let's see why. I just want to say a quick shout out to uh, T-Spill uh, because that means I don't have to do uh, like any form of actual like paying attention to anything myself. I can just watch one of these videos and get an idea of what's going on. It's fantastic. Over the last few days, we've seen Jeff Wittick go from protecting David Dobrik and still continuing a friendship with him to completely turning on him. Everyone was wondering what made Jeff go from protecting David to publicly bashing him and unfollowing him. I think the reason why they're not friends anymore is because Jeff mentioned on one of his live streams that David didn't pay for his medical bills, even though he said he was going to, but he didn't tell him. So he ended up going into debt on his credit card. So now he like can't buy a house or anything. What are friends for, eh? David's gonna be trending on Twitter tonight. Who gives a f No, he's not. His yeah. clout's over. He's done. It's washed up. David drove an excavator into a lake and decided to let his friends swing off of it into the water. In the lake, we have this tractor, and then we have Heath and Todd. You guys ready? Ready. 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 <laughs> All right, let's go. When it was Jeff's turn, David took him way too high, way too fast, and Jeff's eye was history. Now, Jeff didn't actually lose his eye, but he came very close to it. The problem with David calling this an accident is that it's not really an accident. David took heavy machinery that he had no proper training on into a public lake, most likely without any kind of permit, and then swung all of his friends off of it. He had to know that he was putting his friends in a great deal of danger for content. Okay, of course he did know that. I, I don't think anybody's debating the fact that he knew it was dangerous. That was kind of the whole point of the stunt, which is what it was. It was a stunt, not by trained professionals. Um, it, it was like something that they do on jackass. But I do think it's an accident, right? Because I, cause I don't think he did it on purpose. That's terrible when you find the behind the scenes vlog footage where he decides that he's going to try and pick off every member one by one until he's the only one left. I don't think it was his intention to kill him. Well, on a more cheery note here, um, if you guys want to win something from me, uh, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel because you probably aren't subscribed already. That'd be great. Um, please subscribe because uh, one lucky one of you will get to come out with me and uh, I'll fling you around a forklift truck. I thought it'd be fun for a video. David was even warned before Jeff got on. He tried to take Corinna way too high and the rope started to slip from her foot. She actually got mad at David and told him that he always takes these things way too far. Even though Jeff forgave David, people could tell there was a lot of resentment there. The one thing that blows my mind with the David Dobrik vlogs is surely if everybody could see that these things were going too far, um, and obviously hindsight is uh, 2020. Why didn't people stop taking part? Now, I do actually know the answer to that. It's pretty rhetorical. It's because everybody's careers was based on that. Because a lot of people, I think, seem to really misunderstand why people like Jeff stuck around. And I don't really like the fact that people comment stuff like, oh, but why would you stick around if it was all so terrible? Um, because they were scared of what would happen if they left. I think that's the main reason. You know, you don't want to lose your money. You don't want to lose your brand partnerships. You know, you may think that you're cool, but being friends with David Dobrik's cooler, man. That's that's how these things work. And um, it's unfortunate, but uh, people do end up getting stuck in these really toxic situations because they don't know where to go. They don't know where to turn to. These people are meant to be their friends, but not just that. These people are also their career. And having those things like tied intrinsically is just not good for anyone. 
David got to move on with his life and do these big things and get amazing opportunities. Well, Jeff had to put his life on hold and take care of his health. Yeah, I do find that mental that like Jeff's in a hospital bed. Meanwhile, if you go on the Discovery <laughs> Twitter account, you just got David Dobrik's face <laughs> planted all over it. Well, his mate is like still going through surgery that he's meant to be paying for, but he isn't. I just can't believe it. It's so strange. Like, um, maybe they should have postponed it a bit. <laughs> maybe. Even after all the scandals that David had last year, he still managed to land a show with Discovery Plus called Discovering David Dobrik. He got to travel all around the world to these amazing places with his friends. I love if you go back and zoom in on that little, like, passport photo thing. It just says David Dobrik in, like, big block capitals and then just right at the bottom, and friends. Just really small. Um, that's why people like Jeff stick around for so long. And Friends gets you a Discovery show. Hey, David, if you're looking to toss somebody off like a cliff, I'm not even bothered what happens to me afterwards. Call me. No, I was joking, you psychopath. Meanwhile, Jeff is stuck at home, having to suffer through nine surgeries, all because of David. Jeff revealed during a live stream the other day that David never texted him after his ninth and most dangerous surgery. There was a good chance that Jeff would have lost his vision and David didn't even ask him how it was. Jeff finally woke up and unfollowed David off of social media and aired out his true feelings during his live. Everyone wants to know what made Jeff have such a drastic change of heart. But I'm done being fake friends with that mother well, Jeff posted a video to his Jeff FM YouTube channel titled Dear David. The video actually starts off at a different location than their normal podcast setup. Jeff was prepared to talk about the David situation, but then he cuts back to their normal setup. Jeff said he did a whole episode talking about David, but he got way too heated and he was also on painkillers from his surgery, so he just had to scrap it and try it again. Let me see if I can find the actual Jeff Wittick clip. Real reason I was mad. It's going to come out publicly in a month anyway, but David filmed the documentary and the producer of the documentary, creator of the documentary, director, whatever you want to call it, he called me, FaceTimed me to show me the clip of the interview when David addressed the situation with the crane. And he said that it was my fault. Oh, wow. Um, well, if he did do that, I, I don't really know um, how that would be possible because I I'm pretty sure he was the one operating the crane. Kind of mad if he did just... <laughs> blame him in the documentary but i suppose we'd have to see it to know i have no idea whether david dobrik did say that uh it's easy to just assume i suppose we'd have to see uh but it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't want to necessarily blame himself for the fact that he nearly like um i don't know hurt somebody to the point of no return jeff starts off by saying that he's been protecting david for way too long he didn't expect the live that he did over on Patreon to get leaked because he only has about 100 subscribers over there and he didn't expect it to blow up the way it did. Jeff does admit it felt really good to get everything off of his chest and say how he really feels. It felt good to get that out there. It felt good to hit that unfollow button. You know, I woke up from surgery and a day goes by, no text from him. Another day goes by, no text. Jeff says he's really mad that he sugarcoated the documentary he released last year. That is crazy though that he just didn't reach out after leaving a man with like permanent injuries for life. That is really sad. It doesn't matter if they have fallen out, I guess. Because um, they probably have, I'd assume. <laughs> Before this, I'm, I'm sure there's loads of things we haven't seen which people don't account for. Um, but I don't think Jeff could have probably done anything bad enough to uh mean that david would uh, ghost him after you know everything going on so why did he do that and david blamed it on jeff being crazy and he said that it was my fault david blamed me for the the cra he insinuated that i was crazy i always want to push it and i'm the reason that this happened when that's complete there's 20 people on the beach that are witnesses i have six terabytes of footage of you asking me begging me to go out there and do the thing again and that you would spin it slow you just want to take me out there because it's more scenic jeff said he was in shock wow um yeah even if it's like a prank i feel like pranks kind of cross the line when they get into the part where the thing you're doing to the other person is like life-threatening 
That's like saying to somebody, hey man, I've got this BB gun, you run around in the corner, I shoot you with it. But then I run around the corner and you actually greet me with a Magnum, a 44 Magnum, uh, a revolver, you shoot me in the head. Prank. Yeah, I don't think it would go down very well. Here he is giving David a break, didn't sue him, didn't press charges, yet David has the audacity to put the blame on Jeff. If Jeff had to press charges, David could have been deported. He saved David's life, even though David ruined his. Jeff feels like since the documentary he did is over now and has been up for nearly a year, David feels like he no longer has to cover his ass. Wow, this is deep. Um, because by the way, he definitely can still probably end up getting in trouble for nearly murdering somebody. I don't really feel like there's much of a time limit on that. Jeff even let David review the series before it went live and let him take out whatever he wanted to save his image. Wow, um, so much for the documentary then. Well, at least we get to see it from his side. So we'll have two David Dobrik documentaries. Fantastic. The most shocking thing is, David apparently came over after Jeff had surgery, walked right by Jeff, and jumped straight into editing and removing things from the documentary. Didn't ask him how he was, just right into editing bits out. Jeff was also upset because apparently he got a phone call from Kourtney Kardashian and David shoved the phone in Jeff's face and was like, look, he did something stupid. Jeff didn't want to kick off and start fighting with David in front of Kourtney, so he just had to sit there and take it. But I told him after when we were alone, I said, look, that call, that's not how this is going to go. I'll take this on the chin. I'll eat this. I'll believe it was an accident and I'll try my best to forgive. But if you go around saying that this was not your fault, and you try to put it on the other guy, who's me, and say that this was my fault, these life-altering injuries, then there's going to be problems. That's, That's where the switch flips. Man, uh, that is actually insane. To just blame him for the fact that he did that to his eye, like he ran into a wall or something at first. Or he, like, you know, did that old-school saying where it's like, oh, if all of your friends jumped off a cliff, would you follow them? I don't really think Jeff knew that he was jumping. He had no idea it was a cliff. He had no idea that the edge was going to drop that sharp and that quickly. They were supposed to cover the hospital bills. They slacked because whatever the f doing, making stupid vlogs. They didn't pay attention to something that's, I, I would think it's pretty important here because the, the bills go to my name and our agreement was just cover the hospital bills. I don't care about anything else. I don't, I'm not coming after him for money I lost from not being able to work or anything like that. But I got a, a bill that wasn't paid and they didn't pay a Bill, I got an infraction on my credit now. I go to get a house and I can't get a loan because now I have another. Inf so it's just like things are piling up over and over again and just try a little bit. That's crazy, man, because all David has to do is just like at least pay the bills. Uh, I mean, you don't even really have to be mates because you, if you've fallen out for so many reasons at that point, that's not even necessary. I don't think you shouldn't just be mates for the sake of being mates. I, I clearly think that David obviously wants nothing to do with Jeff because he's terrified of the situation and if i was jeff i'd want nothing to do with david even though you'd feel let down by the fact that surely he wouldn't want to be more of your friend after what he did to you but hey man that's what people are like on youtube i guess i just think that the crazy part is is that he just allowed that to slip because this wouldn't be a thing that people are talking about right now if he had just made that payment surely that must have been an important thing for him the final part about all this is apparently Ethan Klein was talking about this on his podcast, um, as you may be able to see here on screen. And um, Jeff's mate, who's in the podcast with him, uh, broke into the gated community and decided that he was going to try and like threaten them by like walking past their house and stuff. Even though Ethan Klein's actually just had a new child with Ella Klein, so that's a bit strange of a thing to do at uh, the best of times, anyway. But maybe not now when they got a new kid. Um, that's insane. Luckily, I'm in London, so I don't think anything like that can happen to me. Uh, I've locked the door anyway, just in case. Why am I getting a, a phone call? Oh, yeah, I'll come and get my pizza hat in a second. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks. False alarm. But, yeah, remind me, um, never to, uh, get in beef with any vloggers. It could be fatal.